All right, I'm gonna do a little case conversion here. Um, 223 over to 300 blackout and I've refined the process a little bit here so I'm gonna go I know I've made videos on this in the past I'm gonna go over the newer way that I'm doing it which seems to be a lot better and there's multiple reasons why and the first thing I do now is I remove the decapping pin from my sizing die and here's the reason why what it does is it allows me to resize the case and then trim it and I've already got a case that's ready to load after it's trimmed and deburred versus resizing then chopping it then trimming it now all I'm doing is sizing and chopping and deburring and I'm ready to go it cuts a step out so I'm gonna go ahead and walk through the process but I think it's best to go ahead and remove this pin and the other reason was is you tend to get a lot of burrs that would get start building up right here and this would be the brass burrs that broke off the brass and what would happen is once they started getting built up right here it would start denting the neck of the case and it also looks like it has worn this pin a bit now I've contacted Lee and I got a brand new pin so I'm not really concerned about the wear and case conversion can be hard on your die so be prepared for that and you might even want to buy an extra resizing die and just have one for conversion and one for reloading in the future all right now with your case is lubed up really well all you're gonna do is push it up in your die without the pin like I said and it's gonna look just like this when you're done. Basically, it just resized the whole thing. And here's another reason you can't do this with the pin in there, because it tries to swell up the whole case and then it eventually bottoms out. So you gotta remove the whole pin in order to do it the way I'm doing it. So that's how it'll look after you've resized the whole thing. All right, another thing I've done to streamline this process is take the time to adjust my jig perfectly. It's a level and I've got it set up so that when I trim the case, I just hold it back here as far as I can, make sure it's level and when I trim it, it's the correct length without having to trim it again on a hand trimmer. Now the other thing is, if you run this saw blade and get it extremely hot, what's going to happen is it starts warping and and it'll your cases will be all funny. Um, they won't cut straight if it's hot. So you're going to want to. I just cut ten at a time. So I've what I've done is I've resized ten, then I'll cut ten, and then I'll resize ten and cut ten. That way, it's allowing it to cool down. So I'll go ahead and cut them now. Now this saw came from Amazon and the jig came from Amazon too th from a company called Squirrel Daddy. Um, Amazon does not sell the jig but they do have vendors or Amazon stores that have it and this was called Squirrel Daddy and it's a pretty nice jig actually. So uh, and then it, it can uh, it's got a guard. I don't use the guard because it tends to get in the way but it does have a guard and uh it's a pretty nice jig i think the jig was like uh 16 dollars or something it didn't cost much and then basically the result though is a perfect 300 blackout case i'll go ahead and deburr it and it's a perfect case um the other thing that you can do to streamline the process is just throw it in your tumbler and the media usually pulls the burrs off so if you don't want to deburr it your tumbler generally will do a pretty good job of deburring it. But that's pretty much it. 
it's quick and easy to make a 300 blackout case. Now this setup, it took me a while to get to this point. Before this, I was using um, a little pipe cutter and I was just marking it with, a, I was measuring it with a measuring tape, marking it, and then I was cutting it with the pipe cutter. And uh, I made hundreds, thousands of cases that way over time until I decided that that was just way too much work and I just went ahead and uh, bought the saw and the jig through Amazon. So, um, But there is several ways you can do it. You can use the pipe cutter, like I said, and do it by hand. Your fingers will get sore. You can even put the pipe cutter on here and then put it in the chuck of a drill and use the drill to spin the case to cut it. That's what I was doing before I got this. So there's several different ways you can do this, but this seems to be the best way.